Today I'm going to talk about a group of people that many of you hate and they are influencers. I guess this growing feeling of resentment towards influencers have been ongoing for a while now but never has it been so pronounced until recently when the infamous Faves Asia video came out. Faves Asia appears to be an agency for micro-influencers, their words, not mine, <laughs> defined as influencers with less than 10,000 followers. Their video was meant to showcase what you can become if, like Hilda, you only have 1k followers but envy the lifestyle of semi-famous girls who show their bras and panties online and you hope to achieve the same. Yeah, we've been talking for so long already. I even know what bra and panty she wears. What? Eh, how about my bra and panty? No la, but seriously, I also want all the sponsorships. You got me for us? Um, like 1k. Yuda, so many fans already ah. Yeah, I did expect Asia to give me so much exposure. In one fell swoop, the video managed to summarize in precisely three and a half minutes every single thing that people hate about influencers. That they are talentless, vapid, materialistic females on the prowl for the next free sponsorship they can get. Dining with them would be intolerable as they insist on taking the perfect flat lay when every item of food arrives and they probably bring with them little sprigs of baby breath everywhere they go. The dinner conversation will be dominated by little humble brags about how incredibly popular they are as they show you their perfectly manicured and free fingernails. The deepest thought they ever had is probably whether yellow or white light complements their complexion more. It is a pretty important question. They most likely masturbate to a photoshop image of themselves using a sponsored vibrator. I know, because I'm an influencer too. After the Face Asia video came out, online vitriol poured in from everywhere. One of the articles about the video went viral and in it, author Donovan Choi explained why he thinks watching the Face Asia video fills viewers with an uncontrollable urge to vomit. It is beyond the cringy acting or the bad audio, he says. It is because of the hypocrisy. In the past, the audience at least gave influencers the benefit of doubt that they cared about what they put online and that all the free stuff they got out of it was a lucky byproduct of their hard work or talent. But once the Face Asia video came out, the last shred of doubt was destroyed. There it is, plain as it can be, that the influencers only cared about the fame and the freebies, not their audience not their content. When confronted with the criticism about the materialism that was so evident in the video, right on cue, the micro-influencers explained that content creation is their passion and it is hard work. That was tiring. I've linked to both Hilda and um, the random drink holding girl's response and you can read their drivel below about how being an Instagram whore, I mean, sorry, uh, being an Instagrammer is truly hard work and requires much passion. And surprise, how they are not materialistic at all. In Donovan's article, he says that it's easy to tell that influencers are not truly passionate about content creation because they're so caught creations are all the same cookie cutter variety. They all use the same tried and tested popular methods to get likes, followers or subscribers and none of them want to create something that's unique, original or pushing artistic boundaries. I will agree that this statement is mostly true because how many people truly have a passion for creating the typical popular Instagram feed filled with the same whitish filters, the same flat lace and the same yoga poses. Donovan also says that you can tell when influencers aren't truly interested in content creation because they rarely post about contentious topics such as politics, religion or race relations. This is because they know that posting about these topics will cause a rift and they will risk losing followers or their sponsorships. And they would never choose to risk it because god forbid people unfollow them. On this, I have to disagree with Donovan. He's assuming that these so-called influencers who post selfies at nauseum on their Instagram 
their feet, have deep thoughts about social issues and refuse to speak out about any because of the possible fallout involved. I'm letting you know now, Donovan, that many of them do not even think about anything beyond the next hair colour that they should have. Most of them don't even have a blog. Their entire thought process is contained within Instagram captions. It isn't so much a careful, calculated effort, but rather a genuine lack of care about anyone but themselves. Not saying that there's anything wrong with this. After all, many young people tend to be apathetic about social issues and self-involved. I'm just stating facts as facts. As for YouTubers, I think it's fair to say that a comedy channel will be reserved for comedy. Why would you expect to see politics in it? It all feels a little confusing because how can we tell who are the influencers who are simply copying a tried and tested method to get the same freebies that their predecessors did? And who are the influencers perhaps a little less deserving of hate because they seem to care at least a little bit about their content creation? How do we know which influencer is genuinely passionate and which one is just in it for the money. After all, there's a difference between someone who's just posting authentic stuff, suddenly finds herself rather popular and decides to monetize it, <coughs> yours truly, versus someone who starts out aiming to be popular in the first place and as such will pander to anything and everything that will help achieve that aim regardless of whether it's true to herself or not. The second one feels insincere, desperate and kind of fake. Is there even a way to tell the fakes from the real or are most people just somewhere on the spectrum? If one of the ways to find out is by checking if an influencer is only posting things that their audience likes, then is it fair to say that since my audience likes controversy, by having controversial content, I am actually pandering to what they want. Am I now also insincere in content creation? Ah, oh, okay, geez, I'm having an existential crisis right now. Help. Beyond the insincerity, I think many people also feel disgusted by influencers because by and large, they are indistinguishable from each other and since many of them do not appear to be particularly hardworking or talented, people don't think that they deserve any of the sponsored high life that they are having. So, my question to you, my audience is, what type of influencer do you like and what type do you hate? After the Face Asia video went viral, many people did parodies and Click Network did one as well. If you haven't watched it, the link is down below. I star as Hilda and many of Singapore's prominent influencers are in the video as well. In the creation of the spoof, we made sure to not appear condescending by letting people know that what they perceive to be the perfect glamorous influencer life may not be like what they see on social media. But our consideration was not enough for Face Asia because they took offence at the video and they wrote that the influencers in the video are hypocrites because we have all forgotten where we begin as micro-influencers, I suppose? And Face Asia claim that we are calling the poor, struggling micro-influencers names just because the Spoof's video slogan had the word rising changed to wannabe. Face Asia then demanded that all the influencers involved publicly apologise. Since Face Asia is asking me to apologise, well, I guess I shall. Cue the sad music. To all the micro-influencers, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry that Face Asia made you guys look like wannabes. That's right, it's not the spoof videos that made all the micro-influencers featured look like sad, desperate wannabes. It is Face Asia itself! The boss of Face Asia came out to say that the video is meant to be deliberately cringy to get attention. But what he neglected to realise or failed to give a fuck about is that in the process of wanting to create something that goes viral, he disregarded all the influencers in the video who are now seen as jokes. If you want to be in a video that features you looking sad about having 1,000 followers and looking delighted later on when you are driven around in a Maserati and sipping champagne, you can hardly be surprised that people think that you are a materialistic wannabe. Really? Did it come as a shock? And an apology for calling you guys wannabes? Are you serious? This is coming from the people who called you guys micro. Do you not hear how insulting that sounds? Face Asia doesn't really want an apology. Their strategy has been clear from the start. They're trying to go viral and once they did, they wanted to prolong the drama. 
Here's a screenshot from Gong Gong, who was also in the spoof video, sharing about it on his Facebook. Faith's Asia's founder, Skylip, as you can see, wrote, Thanks Jay on that post. He clearly was not offended by it, but happy to be talked about. As for his micro-influencers, hurt feelings, he should be the one apologizing for making them appear exactly like the type of wannabe influencer that everyone hates. Him asking influencers in the spoof video to apologize is a little bit like a chef who tells you that his food gives people food poisoning and when you say you don't want to eat it, he gets offended. Alright, so I'll end off my video here. If you are very free, I suggest you can watch this hilarious interview that Skylim did where if you look closely, you can see it's recorded on an iPhone that is balanced on a chair that's balanced on a table. The video also features many random people walking around and the videographers like using his phone while he's filming and it has zero likes. I've never seen an empty YouTube bar before. Oops, I went to dislike it. So what are your opinions on this whole influencer saga? Do you hate us? Do you love us? Leave me a comment below and let me know. And of course, remember to check out all my other videos. Don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!